Hey guys, I'm Jerusha and you're watching Jerusha Couture TV. Today we are here to talk about the slightly controversial topic of my Louis Vuitton Speedy Bandelier in the 25 size in monogram canvas. I would just let you know that on my lips today, slightly satin, got a bit of gloss, no, no top gloss, but it's got a bit of a shine to it is my brand new, because I had to buy another one, I gave my first one to my mother-in-law. Ding! What a great daughter-in-law. This is the Gucci in the satin, and this is Blaze of Noon. This is one of my absolute favorite, favorite nudes because it is a satin. I love my modern from Chanel so much, but that's 100% such a matte. Now let's get into this, shall we? This is truthfully one of my most searched and, and viewed, but also like searched, created conversation, created interaction videos that is on my channel. The review of this Speedy B way back when, God, I had long ombre hair and before we had kids, I was in, I think in our office building and I reviewed this bag and it sparked so much, I guess, kind of influence and so much Oh my God, interest in this bag. I hadn't really come, you know, across the idea of getting the Speedy with the strap and it was so, so new. So that would have been back in, what, 2014, I think, because I picked this bag up brand new from the Louis Vuitton store in Rome, Via Condotti, Via Condotti, I think, and we were on our Europe trip and I picked it up there. I remember, the first time I saw this bag on Pinterest or wherever I saw it, it was a proper editorial picture of this bag when it was just getting started. Like literally, it may have been, been four or five months and there was no heat on it, no one had really tapped into it. And I just remember this image so well and I was like, this is a fire. So where it went from there was that I did the unboxing video, I then did that full review of it, I mean, I did point form, you know, I went over the patina and the strap and the sag and everything, everything. And yes, it, it caught on, should I say, it caught on quite a lot. I obviously got inundated with interest on this bag and what do you think and what does it fit and is it good for uni, is it good for, you know, work, what is it just casual, can you dress it up and so on and so forth. Massive, massive conversation and interaction from that video. This then went on to be, you know, everything in my collection so much use out of this bag and so much a forever bag and it'll forever be my collection and forever ever ever I'm so sick of hearing that you have no idea uh, that it almost how do I put it it almost got too much glory does that make sense it was so hyped I know so many friends and other youtubers and influencers who picked up this bag in all of the canvases ended up selling them or moving them out too many too you know it wasn't a hype bag but it's on the same playing field as the pochette Matisse they are forever bags okay they're gonna they're gonna be classics they just are I mean obviously the speedy is iconic but the new New, not new, but the inter reinterpretation with the ki with the strap and the pochette Matisse, they're gonna be around. That's it. The generations to come will have these bags around. So it's not as if it's a hype bag and it's over and it's out of trend. It just was a hype bag for, I don't know, I guess the internet world or the YouTube world. So that's the thing so much. If I said to you tomorrow, that's it, I'm selling this, so many people would be shook. Okay, that's a whole nother video to come. I definitely think I need to do like Jerusha's opinion on this whole like buy and sell crap about the luxury community and blah, 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 because there's so much to say about it, trust me. It's super controversial, but there's a lot to say. And it's got a lot to do with this sort of stuff, is that, you know, things can run hype, and they can run hype in your life, and they can almost get too glorified and become too big and need to take a step back, you know, need to kind of have a seat 
This kind of drifted that way along with the fact that I can't remember the exact time. It was, I think it was in the old boutique of Bondi Junction. I ran into my friends, Amy and Mel. Hi guys, they're big on the purse forums on Facebook. They've got their own. And they have never liked patina. It's not their thing. They like the whiter raw leather. They don't like the turning of the leather. And a lot of people don't as well. They never ever have. I personally loved it. I originally loved it. I in fact bought, you know, my original key pool. I bought a vintage so, to, so it was already patinaed quite a lot. Then something changed. Something snap changed as well. When I think I was seeing Amy and Mel, they were just like, we we sell the second it gets to a particular shade and we rebuy. Even if they lose money, they would say they rebuy because they don't want it to go past a particular shade of patina. Which at the time I was like, oh my god, that's crazy. Like, how can it be? And then slowly, slowly, I don't know, I just saw the light. I was like, it makes it look dirty and old and and miskept if that makes sense there is a stage of patina that is so beautiful and so nice and then there's a stage where it's vintage okay and nothing wrong with vintage buy vintage i buy vintage girl do vintage that's how i started as well this you know start anew but it's worn and as much as i was like it tells a story it's the journey you've been through sure this is a big journey, a long time, you know. As it starts to get grotty and dirty, it just started to wear on my soul. And now I am being truthful, okay? I am coming at you 100. I'm not making this fluff up or saying, you know, um, I haven't changed my mind. Yeah, I have changed my mind. I now feel as though in my life I don't particularly vibe with patina. So take it there. Chew it, eat it, smoke it. That is how I feel. And I am expressing it because we share on YouTube and that's just it. If you bought this bag because I reviewed it, I did not hold a gun to your head and say you had to. But if my feelings change down the track, that's nothing on your feelings. You may still like patina and it getting really dark, but that's just where evolution takes us, you know? That's where change of mind takes us, exactly like a haircut. So that was the first step, is I felt like I glorified it to myself so much, almost too much, almost. I put it on a pedestal so much that I just was like, it's it's everything, it's everything. And slowly, slowly, I stopped using it. I just didn't reach for it. I just went for other bags. I went for my Porsche Matisse. I still go for my Porsche Matisse. I want another Porsche Matisse. I now want to go back to reverse monogramming Porsche Matisse because it's all I grab. Over this, which is wild. I have my smog bag organizer for it. It's a game changer for a bottomless pit bag like this. That didn't make any difference. I found it too big. I found it too bulky. I started making excuses for it on and on and on. At the end of the day, the truth was I glorified it and it just, it lost its shine to me. And that's really quite sad. That's the first thing that happened. We're going to go in chronological order here. So that was the first thing that happened in the first video. That's the second point about, the third point about patina. The fourth point is in this house, this is a three and a half story house. In the bottom of our basement, we are having huge uh, constructural issues. And if you follow my channel and follow me, follow me on Instagram, you could have seen and now seen me move studios in this house. Not all of my studios have been in many different houses if you followed my channel from the beginning. Oh, should we count them? My first apartment, my city apartment, the Palm Beach Beach House. Sorry, that's my rugrats. The cottage, my offices, my second offices, my in-laws house, and then this house. Yes? No, the townhouse. We bought a townhouse in between that. Jeez, we've had a lot of houses. And now this house. So yeah, around nine or 10, almost like a, 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 a studio a year, because I've been on YouTube 10 years. Downstairs needs full rip out construction, okay? It's got really bad seepage issues. This was one of the three bags that was damaged with mildew growth. 
So because this is raw cowhide vachetta leather, because it's raw, it's like untreated, it's like it's breathes, it's like an animal. In part, in part area of my studio, I will throw pictures in. I do have documented pictures. Vachette was covered in mildew growth, covered. It was so upsetting. It was soul wrenching. The internals were covered in mildew, it got conditioned and it got, went to the cobbler and got taken care of and everything. But at the end of the day, it still has permeated kind of that, you know, op shop, thrift store kind of smell. But it just made the whole feeling 10 times worse. I was like, it's damaged. It's been hurt. Oh my gosh. Now it's ridiculously vintage. And it was, it was really heart wrenching. And I was just like, I can't do it anymore. I don't, I don't want it anymore. What am I going to do with it? I'm not going to sell it. It's not in a condition to sell. And I was like, well, I'm going to just gift it. I'll just gift it to one of my nieces or something like that. And then I was like, well, that's like, no, just hold on to it. So it's just been sitting and that is about it. It just lost its shine. It wasn't, it, there was no TLC and it was just, it was a sad story. It is a sad story. And because we do so many like unboxings and great bags and this and that, I wanted to tell this sad story and I wanted to tell you the truth of what has happened to this bag in my life. Whether or not I will part with it and get a new one or just leave it. But yeah, I wanted to tell this sad story as well because we always hear great stories and they're not always great. And it's not always a nice feeling. And this, if you follow my channel, was such a hyped bag in my life. I want to show you where I'm at now. And you can sort of see how polarizingly different the two stages are. And I think that's important to know. That is the story of my Speedy B. When I bought it though, it was 2013. I think it was something like, I want to say 980 euros. Was that's crazy. So absolutely massive inflation since then but that is the true story of my speedy bee many of you have asked that is it it is not glamorous it is not shiny and pretty i don't know where to go from here i don't know how to feel about it let me know in the comments below let's start a conversation if this has ever happened to you with any bag with any single bag it could be you know a goyard a Dooney and Burke, a coach bag, a Chanel bag, anything, any category of designer or luxury bag where, you know, it just, a little bit of the shine rubs off and that's okay too. So that is it guys. If you like my kind of story time truth about this bag, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already and you wish to do so, there is a button below. I'd super appreciate that guys. I've checked my analytics and about 65% of my viewers aren't subscribed to my channel. It would mean so much to me if you guys did go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope everybody is staying safe and doing really well guys. I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Peace.